Up next, here to speak to you about how LGBTQ global citizens can elevate Asia's future development path, all the way from Hong Kong, and the founder of Global Citizens Capital is Kenneth Kwok. Am I on? Perfect. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name is Kenneth. Uh, first of all, three very, very important announcements. My last name is pronounced Kwok, okay? K-W-O-K, Kwok. Second, my Instagram is Prince of Kwok. And third, the most important of all, I'm single. They even wrote a song about me. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I've got. I'm still single and looking for a quack. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much for having me. Um, I do hail from Hong Kong. Um, wait, actually, I'm looking for my... This thing? Ooh. Looks like walkie-talkie. Ah, there you go, okay. So, my job here is really to introduce a little bit about myself and the work I do in Asia. Um, I'm very fortunate, to be very honest, that I had a Western upbringing. I grew up in Hong Kong, and then Taiwan, and then Japan, and then Canada, and then the United States of America. So my family travels quite a bit when I was young. Uh, my parents made sure I traveled at least two to three new countries every year since I was five. It's kind of like collecting like brownie points or Boy Scouts kind of thing. Um, so it led me to this day, where as I'm slowly approaching 40 years old, that I've decided to contribute back to the LGBT community by having my own charity foundation. So this on the screen is my blueprint of my current business. I run an investment fund called Global Citizen Capital. Uh, it majoritarily invests in companies which are very social entrepreneurship based and actually look after the minority communities, including clearly the LGBTQ community. Then I take proceeds of the funds, of the returns every year that I make to privately fund my own LGBTQ foundation called Better Together. Better Together currently operates in six countries in Asia. I'll go into a bit more detail later. But last year, I had a revelation. I'm like, great, I'm connecting the business side of the LGBT community. I'm connecting the philanthropic side of the LGBT community, but something is missing. And after months of you know, uh, speaking to my mentors, speaking to my wonderful friends, I decided that, you know what, we live in a world that is not very self-healing right now. There are a lot of chaos, there are a lot of troubles, uh, personally, professionally, politically. So I decided to start a new initiative within my um, framework, which is called Heal to Live, something very dear to me, and which, again, I'll go into more detail later. Um, bit of marketing, I suppose. Um, what I do in the capital fund um, as I, uh, I was very lucky enough to speak at Davos this year in World Economic Forum, uh, actually as the Asian LGBT represent representative in the uh, Sustainable Development Program. Um, I talked about the investments that my fund has made in hotels. Uh, currently, my fund is a proud owner of three Hyatt, and we're hoping to close the deal with Hilton, uh, depending on how nice they are to me. Um, <laughs> Actually, I didn't even get a suite upgrade this time. I actually sc scrapped that. No more Hilton. Um, I do a bit of blockchain work, as you know. Uh, nothing to do with cryptocurrency, blockchain, just the technology itself. Um, we also do regenerative medicine and healthcare. So basically, these are the niches that my fund invests in. Um, the healing arm, as I like to call it, is my favorite part now. As Again, as I slowly approach 40, I look at myself sometimes and be like, you know what, it doesn't hurt to you know, feel or look like a, you know, early 30 years old all the time. So we invested in quite a few stem cell clinics, um, a few hormonal therapy treatments. Uh, as you saw in the picture, I recently got my uh, Swiss Olympic training 
um, in uh, a city called Bad Regards in Switzerland. Um, again, just, you know, it's important to feel healthy sometimes because the amount of work that you and me and everyone here does for the LGBT community, we got to look good. We want to feel good. We have the energy to do what we, de we need to do. Hence, you know, I would love to go into more details of this later. And lastly, my charity arm. Okay, it's very colorful, I'm sorry. Um, my favorite uh, foundation uh, event uh, in Asia is that we are the only foreign sponsor of the China AIDS Walk on the Great Wall of China. So we benefit more than maybe 5,000 uh, children living with HIV in China. Um, and it's amazing, you know, surprisingly, the Chinese government gives a section of the Great Wall to march. So we don't really see anybody but rainbow flags everywhere. Um, I also sponsor Vietnam Pride, uh, as well as, um, well, Bangkok Pride, which is essentially a very big 5,000 person party. Um, um, I'm also very lucky to have brought the Gay Games to Asia for the first time. Uh, for those of you who know about Gay Games, it started in 1982 in San Francisco. For the first time in history, we're going to host it in Hong Kong. So we look very much forward to bringing everyone to Hong Kong in, well, three years. And it literally, it's the biggest uh, LGBT sporting event in Asia. Um, so very, looking, very much looking forward to that. A show of hands, and I love playing this because it gives me um, you know, some feedback. Who has not been to Asia? Please raise your hand. Security? <laughs> wow, OK. Who has been to Asia many times? Raise your hand. Okay. Most importantly, who has gone out with a date with an Asian man or woman? Yeah. All right, I need your numbers or whatever it is at the, the door. Again, I'm single. I'm sorry, i got to self-promote a little bit. Um, Asia is fun, as you know, because we have so much to offer in a region. Uh, again, with two and a half hour flights from Hong Kong, you can go to basically 13 different countries. Um, Based on statistics I received, uh, we had 366 million visitors a year, uh, last year, uh, more than a quarter of the world's total. And that should hopefully increase more and more. Um, the latest trends I'm not going to cover so much because you guys are all industry experts. Um, China now being you know, the spiritual leader of Hong Kong, so to speak, uh, is growing tremendously. Um, for example, you look at Thailand, which is the most gay-friendliest country in Asia. Well, you know, we, last year, I think we had maybe seven cities to visit. Now we have 11. So again, we're expanding very quickly, uh, primor primarily driven by domestic demand. Um, and don't forget, as Asians, as we also economically grow, we also like to travel. Uh, of, of course, most of the passports out of a region needs a visa to go anywhere, especially the United States of America. So I, again, I'm very blessed that I have a Hong Kong passport, I have a Canadian passport, and I have two other passports for investment purposes uh, in the Caribbean, mostly. Um, so I get to travel. You know, it's kind of cool. You go, you, go, you go to the UK, I'd be like, hmm, which identity should I assume today? Uh, which passport should I use to enter? Um, but all kidding aside, you know, we are working very hard to help Asians uh, more and more come to uh, the US or Canada or Europe. Case in point, New York Pride, uh, World Pride this year, we booked 100 rooms at the Grand Hyatt, <laughs> just my group of friends, right? So, I mean, these are the things that I hope that, you know, people out there will listen closely, that when we Asians like to travel, we travel in groups. Like, we call it the Asian invasion hashtag. You know, um, we take over a hotel, have Chinese food. No, I'm kidding. Um, um, that's a joke. Um, other, other the travel trends that we like to talk about is uh, we love to do everything bespoke. I think it's part of our culture. Like, for example, you know, in Vietnam, I can get a tailored suit for $100 US dollars. A tailored suit, head to toe. Here at, in New York City, you probably get me two pairs of socks. Well, very nice socks, but not a tailored suit. Um, so we are very um, dedicated to bespoking and tailoring things. And a lot of people have caught on in the, in the industry. Another example I'd like to say is like, I'm a big fan of waterfalls. So guess what? There are tours focused just on bringing boys and girls to waterfalls across Asia Pacific. It's a 12 day tour and you get to hit 25 falls. It's amazing. Um, now a bit about LGBTQ uh, in Asia. I, I think it's starting off a very basic platform when we say that being just not 
illegal, it's a good start. Unfortunately, that's where Asia is these days. Um, if you look at it, we have 10 or more countries that are not illegal. Um, but that doesn't equate to you know, uh, favorability or you know, a, po a positive LGBTQ lifestyle. Um, some country highlights, as you know, uh, in three, four weeks, I'll be in Taiwan to celebrate, well, in total, 157 same-sex couples who are about to get married for the first time in Asia. Uh, that's a very big win for us. Uh, in fact, last year we particip participated in Taiwan Pride for that reason alone. Um, of course, people say, well, Taiwan's just doing it to give you, you know, the, I'm sorry, it's a public forum, um, the, the big finger to China. But it is not. It is really about celebrating love in Asia where we all, even as Asians, deserve the same amount of love and respect that anybody else deserves in this world. Thailand just drafted a landmark civil partnership bill that will allow uh, gay couples to have um, same-sex unions. In India, as you know, following the decriminalization, things are also moving ahead. Then the not really good stuff. I mean, no offense to any Malaysians here today. When your Minister of Tourism goes to ITV you know, and say there are no gays in our country, I'm like, what? But that's exactly what he said. And that, I mean, that created 15,000 Twitter memes and all that type of stuff. But you know, unfortunately, things are not doing so well for Malaysia. And on a very sad note, I had to lose two friends uh, this year uh, alone in Malaysia due to the lack of um, mental health um, support. These boys are very promising. They're only 26, 28 years old, and they took their own lives because they feel like that they don't find a place to belong. And this is where a lot of the work needs to continue to be done. Then again, you also have Indonesia, where people are getting uh, whipped and caned in public. And let's not talk about Brunei. Uh, we had to pull three or four conferences out of Grand Hyatt Singapore this year alone uh, because of it's owned by the Sultan of Brunei. So all in all, as I said, there's the good and the bad. And this is why we need you guys. Um, the, I started my own fund called Global Citizen for a very, very simple reason. We all travel a lot. But does traveling on its own really enrich um, the countries where you go? Is it just about spending money in hotels, you know, in nice restaurants and entertainment? Or is it more about also taking spiritual and uh, mental leadership of certain social justice or rights? Clearly, in this forum, we're all very aligned in that thinking. Where we put our money should plant trees of wisdom, should plant trees of enlightenment, should plant trees of ensuring that people know that there's a better world out there looking out for them. So in that sense, you know, every time the, f the folks of you and your friends and families come visit Asia, please do try to connect with the local uh, community by going to local um, fundraising events, or just honestly sometimes you know, meeting guys on social media or whatever apps you guys use and you know, spread the news of like, you know, in our world we do these things, you know, just build, making a friend every day honestly goes a very long way. And then you have know-how sharing, which is very important to uh, drive uh, technology and industry improvements across the scene. And my favorite part, of course, is youth empowerment, because I believe, okay, I can't sing here, children are our future, right? So whatever we do, we should make sure the youth of the next generation have something to look forward to. Again, what can be my future? Like, again, I'm very humble today as a 37-year-old to be standing here from Asia, speaking to all your professionals here around the world, that is the hope that I have for the future generation in Asia, to be able to one day stand on a global forum and present their ideas, present their um, thoughts, and most importantly, present hope to the rest of our region. Lastly, given we're a fund, I really hope that by connecting all these emotional and, you know, um, so-called social um, alignments, we also like to ensure that everybody makes a big chunk of the pink dollar in the LGBT community in Asia. Uh, certain hotels now are LGBT owned and oriented in Asia, that's the new. Uh, in Vietnam, for example, um, you know, we have two or three. In Malaysia, there's one, so it's very exciting. 
uh, entertainment concepts. Uh, these are things that where you professionals can guide us in Asia on how to take advantage of our 3.5 billion people and actually make something very exciting, not just exclusively for the LGBTQ community, but for our allies and our families and our friends, which adds up to, as you can imagine, a lot of people. Uh, fashion and design, uh, clearly, uh, we invest uh, in a scholarship program for local Asian designers. So it's kind of like Project One Way, but you know we call it Project Silk Way, um, you know, because it's in Asia and we love silk. Um, so that kind of thing, you know. For example, our latest uh, winner of this uh, fashion series designed everything using vegan materials. So I was actually walking, judging using a bamboo-made suit, which is kind of cool. Uh, not today, unfortunately. Um, by the way, this is a very dear thing to me. It's the equality key. I'm not sure you guys can see. It's literally like a key with an equality sign. That was one of the win award-winning designs by some of our junior uh, jewelry designers out of China. Uh, lastly, health and beauty. We all love our fruits. I mean, I can be as fruity as it gets. Um, but, you know, I'm sure some of you have never had some of these really beautiful Asian fruits. Like, who's heard of mango steam, for example? It's not a mango. It's not a cousin of mango, but it's called mango steam. And the essence of mango steam is what keeps me looking like 25, frozen in age. Um, <laughs> like, the, a lot of re uh, Asian remedies that I hope to share with you guys one day. And lastly, my favorite, which is medical tourism. Uh, back to the main point about us being uh, from Asia. We are... The, one of the lowest cost base, but the same value for money, medical uh, tourism hubs in the world. Um, if you look at even Thailand here, 60% saving out of, um, uh, compared to the United States or Canada. So lately, most of my friends, what they do is that they come to Asia for a vacation, and they stay behind for three, four days just to have a touch up, you know, have some uh, molecular, cellular therapies, and any of the good stuff, and then they come back looking like 10 years younger, not just superficially, I may add. You, if you take my blood right now, it will show you that I'm very healthy. Uh, I even banked my stem cells at the age of 35, so that in the future, if anything happens to me, I have my 35-year-old self to go back to. So these are the types of technology I would like you boys to, and girls to embrace. And by the way, I'm not talking about me trying to just look youthful forever and I'm not sleeping with younger boys to achieve that. The most important part is you have to really embrace the fact that you want energy, you want to live your life fantastically every day, and waking up, even though I'm technically jet-lagged for 12 hours, I still look decent on stage. Um, these are the type of energy you want to feel, you want to um, embrace, and these are the things that technology in Asia can help you achieve. And I'm sorry, I'm running a bit over time. So lastly, this is where I leave you guys. We are, in many ways, a very developed region, in many ways, a very undeveloped region. I hope, just from my brief 15-minute minute talk today, that you will find some ways to think, at least inspire yourself, where can I make my mark in Asia? Economically, socially, professionally, personally, spiritual, spiritually. I'll leave it up to you, but thank you for your time today. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.